Have you ever stopped to think about the story of the great dead space? Because in my case, I never really gave it the importance it deserved, as I was more focused on the horror than the details of the story. But if we take a moment to analyze it, there are many interesting things about it. That's why, in this video, I want to talk about all of this, about the necromorphs, and this virus that gives dead space an atmosphere and narrative like I've never seen before. So, if you like the video, leave a like and subscribe, get comfortable, and let's start the video. To understand where the monsters we encounter in all the games and in the Dead Space universe, in general, come from, we need to understand that they are directly linked to the mysterious markers, very ancient alien artifacts that are the cause of this new species of monstrous hybrids. These markers were initially mysterious space artifacts, however, humans later began creating their own markers. First, there was the original black marker, and then, the red marker copies emerged. And although it might all seem like a mere coincidence, the reality of these markers is quite terrifying because, in theory, they were created by an ancient civilization with a clear intention to destroy entire civilizations. That's why everything surrounding these artifacts ends in death and destruction. When humanity discovered this black marker, they were never aware of how dangerous everything would become if they started manipulating these kinds of alien artifacts as it was something beyond their control. These mysterious markers emitted a very powerful signal that affected the living, deforming, and corrupting their minds, leading them to completely lose their sanity, something we can clearly see throughout the games, where the few people still alive are completely crazy and lost. However, the purpose of the markers is not only to drive people insane, but also to reanimate the dead, who are reborn as the infamous necromorphs, with the intention of spreading the plague at all costs. The Black Marker, initially discovered in a remote and isolated location, quickly demonstrated its insidious influence. Its signal began to distort human perception, plunging individuals into extreme paranoia and violence. As the living succumbed to madness, the true horror of the Marker unfolded with the grotesque resurrection of the dead into necromorphs, abominations serving the malevolent designs of the Marker. The destruction was swift and complete, initiating a cycle of death that spread alarmingly. Now that you know a bit more about the origin of this madness, let's explore what we understand as the necromorph virus, which, in my opinion, is very poorly named. Unlike conventional viruses, the necromorph infection is not a biological pathogen, but the physical manifestation of the marker's signal, a force that rewrites the genetic code of corpses, transforming them into monstrous killing machines. The process begins with the marker's influence on a population, inciting hallucinations, paranoia, and ultimately, widespread violence. The dead don't stay dead for long. They are resurrected as necromorphs, each more grotesque and lethal than the last. These necromorphs come in many forms and sizes, because, contrary to the complete chaos that this may seem like from the outside, it is terrifying how incredibly well-organized and systematic the spread of the virus through the markers is. Each necromorph has its own way of transmitting the virus giving us a countless number of mutations and monstrosities to face throughout the game. They have blades for arms, which they use to tear apart their victims, others infect infants, climb walls, and are generally very annoying and, of course, disgusting. Each type of necromorph is a carefully designed cog in a nightmare machine, created to maximize the marker's influence and perpetuate the cycle of death. Now that we know how this terrifying system works, the solution seems very obvious. The key is to destroy the markers, which are like Wi-Fi, radiating their signal everywhere. However, this is not enough to completely rid oneself of its influence, as the trauma and psychological wounds induced by the markers rarely go away, and this is very present in the games, particularly the second one, where we can see Isaac completely lost, with hallucinations and on the brink of collapse. So, it's not as simple as it seems. The final objective of the markers is an apocalyptic event known as Convergence. During Convergence, the combined biomass of the necromorphs fuses into a single colossal entity, an amalgamation of death and destruction. This final stage is the marker's grand play and signifies the end of any hope for survival. To prevent Convergence, it's essential not only to destroy the marker, but also to eliminate as many necromorphs as possible. Reducing the biomass available for convergence is crucial to stopping the spread of the plague to other worlds. Additionally, the markers are deeply intertwined with the enigmatic lore of the Church of Unitology, a prominent religious movement within the Dead Space universe. The Church venerates the markers as sacred objects, believing them to be the key to human evolution and the path to eternal life. Unitology's teachings suggest that the markers are divine tools sent by God to initiate a process known as 
ascension, transforming humanity into a single, unified consciousness. However, the gruesome reality behind this belief is starkly different. The process involves the grotesque amalgamation of biomass into the necromorphs, leading to convergence. The Church of Unitology's influence extends deep into the political and corporate sectors, complicating efforts to fight the spread of the necromorph plague. Their dogmatic adherence to the supposed divine nature of the markers means that they often sabotage scientific and military operations aimed at neutralizing these deadly artifacts. The tragic irony lies in the fact that the Church's founders knew the truth about the markers' real purpose, but chose to conceal it to manipulate the masses. Their agenda was not salvation, but control and power, exploiting the fear and hope of their followers. As you can see, all of this is terrifyingly calculated down to every detail, and it seems to be on an immense scale. In the first Dead Space, we play as Isaac Clark, an engineer who finds himself in the middle of all this, obviously without knowing it, on the Ishimura ship, searching for his wife, Nicole. The disaster aboard the Ishimura began with the discovery and activation of a red marker on Aegis VII, a man-made replica of the black marker. Activating this marker unleashed a catastrophic wave of madness and death among the crew, who quickly transformed into necromorphs that invaded the ship. The catastrophe was exacerbated by unitology. Their blind devotion and inability to understand the true nature of the marker's signal played a significant role in the disaster, leading to widespread chaos and destruction. Later in the story, I would say more towards the end, we realized that the marker was affecting Isaac the whole time, causing him to have visions of his wife because, in reality, she had died. Despite facing overwhelming odds, betrayals, and almost insurmountable obstacles, Isaac manages to destroy the marker and the hive mind, a colossal necromorph representing the pinnacle of the infection. This victory is bittersweet. Isaac narrowly escapes the ship, only to be haunted by the lingering effects of the marker's influence, which remain in his mind, leaving him on the brink of madness, as I mentioned earlier, leading to the events of Dead Space 2, which is my favorite game of them all. If you want to see its story in more detail, leave a like to let me know. I think everything I've told you helps to understand the origin and the way this virus works, and worst of all, its apocalyptic intentions, which completely get out of the hands of mere humans. It's undoubtedly one of the best plots in horror games that I've played, and, as I said, you can skip many details, but all the pieces are there, every event and piece of the story, ready to be read. Anyway, we've reached the end of the video. I hope you liked it. Let us know in the comments your thoughts on all this and on the Dead Space games, as well as if you've played them. If not, I would really tell you to try them out. The remake is great, and I think it's a great way to dive deep into the lore. Plus, there's a series that tells how everything went to hell before the events of the first game. It's also really good, and I recommend it. I hope to see you in the next video.